Oh, it's my new lens. New lens again? Yeah, I ordered it on b &H the other day. Shipping was pretty quick. It's the new Nikkor 70. Why does it feel like you always have a new lens? Stop wasting your money on new stuff all the time. Huh. Nah. And besides, this is what I do. These are investments. These are investments. <sighs> Man, why you always gotta be like that? You never under- Oh wait, I don't have a girlfriend. I can buy whatever the fuck. What is up guys, and I have been thinking a lot about gear. I mean, honestly, when am I not thinking about gear? But that's besides the point. And I've realized that after almost four, a little bit over four years of making videos, I've accumulated a lot of gear. A lot of it has been useful stuff, like, you know, the cameras I use, the Nikon Z6, the 35 millimeter 1.8, you know, the cameras and lenses, all very, very useful stuff that I am so happy that I got and that I'm very fortunate to have. And I do not regret spending one single peso on it. But there are also stuff that are pretty not that useful. I mean, I used it once because I thought I needed it for something. Well, I did need it for something and then I never really used it again. So I'm thinking we got a lot of time here. We're in quarantine and I've just been at home, just in my room, just sitting around all my gear. Why don't we take the time to do a little gear review of each and everything I've bought and I've owned throughout my years of photography and videography. And I'll do a little mini review so you guys know whether or not you should buy it. And together let's figure out if there's stuff that I totally regret buying. So you guys can avoid buying those things because in the moment it seems useful and then in the long term, not so much. So here's how it's gonna work. Let's do this systematically. My room is a room, and I usually put all my stuff on the corners of the room, so I'm gonna go through it just like that, and then we'll end up here. So I'm gonna get the stuff, talk a little bit about it, how much I paid for it, if I can remember, and I'll give it a GAB score. It can either be rated as very useful, semi-useful, or a do not buy. All right, first order of business. This is a Manfrotto bag. This is my first actual camera bag. Well, I mean, my actual first one was like a tiny sling, like messenger bag, I think. But it was like just something I found here in storage here at home. So this is the first one that I actually bought for photography. I think it was 2015, if I remember correctly. And this is a Manfrotto bag. I'm gonna put the exact model name over here because I don't remember and I think they named their bags weirdly. I'm not sure, I just don't remember. So yeah, this bag, pretty cool. It's a deep bag. Right now it's just used for storage of all my cables. So I have a nice place where I put all my cables. So these are some audio cables, HDMI cables, extension cords. And as a camera bag, it has this area, so it's pretty deep. Um, this can probably fit, I'm not sure if it can fit a 70 to 200, I don't think so. But it can fit two decently sized lenses here and then one camera. So yeah, and then here you can have your clothes, other accessories, stuff like that. And there's a nice little pouch here for smaller stuff like batteries and yeah, batteries and cleaning stuff and you know, all that photography gear. Aside from, okay, this doesn't look nice, I'm gonna close this. Aside from that, this bag is also pretty nice because it can hold a tripod up front and a laptop, 15 inch laptop here at the side. I put random stuff here now. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty nice bag. Um, Top zipper is where I put my passports and stuff like that when I travel. And yeah, it's a nice Manfrotto bag. Um, I've had this for almost five years, more than five years actually. And it's held up pretty well. Uh, Manfrotto, their products are amazing. So it goes the same way, their bags are amazing. So yeah, very nice bag. I don't remember how much I paid for this because I think my mom bought this for me in Hong Kong as a gift. So I didn't pay for it. So yeah, this was my main camera bag until 20, 
18 when I got a new one, which is my current camera bag, which I'll talk about also. And so yeah, it did a good three years, and now, yeah, it's just something I use as decoration and as some place to put my cables. So since it's a camera bag and it served me very well for like three years, I would give it a very useful. And if you guys would wanna check this bag out, I'll put a link in the description. So yeah, pretty cool bag. It's just a little bulky. That's one of the things that I considered when getting a new bag. I wanted to make sure that it could carry all the same stuff, maybe even a little bit more, but was a little bit more sleek and this one, if you carry this bag, it screamed photographer. So <laughs> I didn't want my bag to scream photographer because you know when you're traveling, you don't wanna call attention to yourself. So that's why I went with a different kind of bag, more sleek. I'll talk about it in a bit. Next thing. All right, so staying on topic with bags, cause this is the bag right above my other bag. This is the Veer 18L from Wandered. Wandered's actually the current brand of bags that I use right now and they're great, I love them. So this is more of like a tiny everyday kind of bag and I keep it inflated and I say inflated because it can go down into a tiny little bag. I'll link the video over here where I talked about this bag and I gave my review and my thoughts about it and it goes down into a tiny little package that you can put in your suitcase or in your other bag or just clip it onto your other bag. So it's super cool, super useful. But I just keep this inflated just in case I need a day bag if I'm going out to, wow, going out, what a concept. Yeah, but if I'm going out to a meeting or something like that, I have a tiny little bag where I can put my camera if I need to and my jacket and other stuff like that. So yeah, very useful. Um, I don't remember what I paid for this. I think it's about $100. I'll put it somewhere. I'll put it in the description just so we can make sure, and if you guys are interested in this bag. I've only had this bag for about a year and I've been using it a lot. It's the main bag that I use when I'm out traveling and yeah, it's, it's, it's very useful. So yeah, very useful. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you can't go wrong with bags, not unless you have like 18 bags, then the use diminishes. So maybe like you have a graph and as you have more bags, the, the use of the, each bag dim diminishes. I, yeah. I, Something like that. I'll draw it on here, maybe. But yeah, very useful. I would recommend getting this if you are in the market for a day bag or something that, you know, cause, cause when, you, when you travel, you don't wanna bring your main bag, your main backpack everywhere you go. You wanna be able to leave it in the hotel or wherever you're staying and then have a tiny bag where you can put your camera and stuff like that, just the necessities for that certain day. So yeah. All right, next let's switch it up with this monopod. This is the Sirui P24S. That is what it's called. I'll just put it down here. And yeah, this has been the one and only monopod that I've been using. And I bought it in 20, I'd like to say 17. And so yeah, three years of use. I still use this a lot. And what's really cool is it has these legs that open up like a tripod, kind of like a tripod and whoops. And you could just stand it like that and it will not fall. So you can have your camera here. I've had the Nikon Z6 with a 24 to 70 on this and I just leave it there and it can stand just like a tripod, but it takes up less space. And so the occasions that you'd use something like this instead of a tripod is like when you can watch that certain thing. So when I'm out shooting basketball or interviews and I can be on the camera, like, you know, just watching the camera instead of talking to the person or interviewing someone, I'll use this because it takes up less space, it's easier to move and it's very stable. So like usually what I do is I step on one of these and bam. Like you will for sure be stable. Now I kind of regret touching this because I've stepped on it. But but yeah, and it also extends. This one is here is to turn it slowly. It's it's kind of weighted, but it's not super like smooth. But the head here is pretty nice. It also has weight, so you can do movements really nice and smooth. This is actually what I use for my B-roll. I switch it out with this head, I put it on the tripod or just use this. And yeah, it's very nice. The one thing that I don't like is this is, this doesn't have a D-ring, so you need one of those L screw things or a coin so you could put it on your camera. But apart from that, 
Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. And so time to give it my GAB score. I would rate it as a very useful. I've used it a ton and I still use it to this day. So I think this is the second biggest tripod they do. They do one with like longer legs, but I didn't really need that. This one can stand pretty well on its own. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. And I would recommend if you're looking for a monopod, this is the one that you go for because Manfrotto also makes a monopod. It was between this and the Manfrotto. It's a, the Manfrotto is a little bit more expensive, but the legs are a little shorter. And so I think what really sold me to go with the Sirui one was the longer legs here. So it could stand better. All right, going back to the realm of bags. This one, it's, it's not such, it's not a bag replacement, but it's more of, you'll see. This is actually my latest pickup. Just right before the coronavirus thing happened because I thought I would be traveling a lot and I wanted my gear to be safe. This is the Pelican Air 1535. Honestly, it's super cool. Like the reason that I got this was I was on a set with like lots of professionals. I was the photographer and there was this giant set and everything. It was really fun and everyone had a Pelican Air or like some sort of Pelican case for their gear, for their audio gear, for their makeup gear, for their video gear. And I was there with a backpack and I was like, I think I need one of these. <laughs> you know, just to look the part. So yeah, this is my Pelican Air 1535. Oh, it's a heavy one, heavy duty. It's probably gonna last me forever. Let's open it up. I got the yellow insert and yeah, black and yellow for Nikon. Oh. And so yeah, as I said, I bought this with the intention of being able to travel with it so I could have all my gear, my 70 to 200, all my lenses, all the cameras that I have in a really nice, safe space. And I know that this thing will protect it. So yeah, good investment. I bought it here in the Philippines for around 23,000 pesos, which is a little bit over retail from like the States, I think. I think this is like $300, $400. But I mean, I didn't have to ship it. And I mean, shipping this giant thing would be such a big hassle, literally. So yeah. Okay, now in terms of usefulness, the GAB score I'm gonna give is to be determined because as I said, we're all stuck here and no one's gonna get to travel anytime soon. So yeah, this guy is gonna have to wait a while before he gets used. What? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I have no use for it apart from being able to stand on it, put stuff on it. Yeah, pretty much. Honestly, I feel kind of stupid for buying it like when I did, but I, I had no idea that this quarantine would last this long. On to the next one. And this one is actually one of the things that gave me the idea for this video because it's not something that I regret, but it's only useful when it's really useful. And I'll explain what I mean. That is this guy, the DJI Ronin S. This is a good thumbnail. Yeah. So the Ronin S, let's, let's build it out and put it out here. I think the coolest thing about this is I always feel like a freaking sniper when I do this part because yeah, this is the silencer, this is the whatever. And, and with the case and everything, pretty dope. All right. So this is the DJI Ronin S. It is a dope ass piece of gear. It's probably the most, one of the most popular gimbals you can get. Uh, it's by the famous company DJI. They're known for their drones and their gimbals also. This one is really built like a tank. I've totally misused this thing and stress test this and yeah, it's, it's still working perfectly fine. I know right now there's a Ronin SC, I think that's what it's called. Basically, it's a smaller version for mirrorless cameras. And I think I would have preferred that, but I bought this last year, maybe, yeah, last year. And there wasn't a version like that, but I'm glad that this one can carry heavier weights. That's super cool, but it's really, really heavy. I mean, like just carrying this around is a arm workout. Like you'll be good with your workout. It's really heavy with a payload. I've pretty much gotten used to carrying it and the weight is not really a problem anymore for me, but the first time I used it, my arms were freaking sore, yo. Like it is, it is different, it's a different level. But it's super nice, it's built like a tank. All the rubber parts are really nice feeling and I wouldn't mind gripping on this thing all day. 
I use this mainly when I'm shooting Street Singing Superstar with Graham. I'll link our channel somewhere here. Super cool stuff. The main shot of that requires a steady following shot. So a gimbal is perfect, something like the Ronin S. It just gets the job done really well. It's nice and compact. It's not too bulky like the Ronin M or something bigger, but it can carry whatever payload I throw at it in terms of the cameras I have, of course. So this one is the interesting one because I tweeted, the Ronin S is the most useless, useful thing I've ever bought or something like that. For that reason, I'm gonna give it a semi-useful score. Semi-useful meaning when I need it to do its thing, like for a street singing superstar or when I need a nice tracking shot or I just, I just need to be able to follow and have the camera steady. It is crazy useful. Like I would not imagine doing the jobs that I do with this without this, if you know what I mean. But aside from that, it's totally useless. I use this like maybe once a month if I'm lucky, depending on how many shoots I have with Street Singing Superstar. But yeah, I mean, this guy doesn't get a lot of use aside from that and some shots that I, some B-roll shots that I have in some videos, but sometimes it's really just not worth taking out. The one thing that I do like about it is I can give this to anybody and the shots will be pretty stable if you give them the basics of how to use a gimbal. If you have a gig or a job or like something constant that you need a gimbal for a lot, then definitely get one of these. The Ronin S is amazing and it's really nicely built. Still haven't broken it. Yeah, I don't know what more I can say about this. Up next is the Fotor Gear Magilite. This is a light painting device. I actually made a whole video about this and I, I brought it on a shoot like last year, late last year. I'll put it up here or here. I'm not sure which side it goes on, but I'll link it. And yeah, it's pretty cool. You're able to draw stuff with the light. It's like light painting and it's pretty fun. I've used it on two or three shoots. I'm pretty sure that I haven't unlocked its full potential yet because I just do basic like light stuff, but I'm pretty sure that you can do a lot of great stuff with this piece of gear. So yeah, in terms of usefulness, I'd rate it semi-useful because I mean, you're not always gonna light paint, but when you do, this thing will come in handy. You'll be so happy that you have it because it makes life so much easier. It's nicely built and it's, it's pretty robust and it comes in a nice carrying case. Pretty useful when you're gonna light paint. If you're not gonna light paint or you don't plan on light painting, then it's pretty useless. I, I tried using it as a light, like a, you know, like a light rod, just as a practical in the back, but it's really not bright enough. So, I mean, aside from light painting, you're not gonna get a lot of use out of this. All right, still in the realm of bags, there's a lot of stuff, so. Sit tight, grab some popcorn, and this is gonna be a long video. This is the Wandered Provoke 21 liter bag. I've seen a lot of YouTubers with this bag, and honestly, it's probably the most aesthetic looking bag out of all the camera bags. I mean, aside from, I mean, it depends on your taste, of course, but for an all black bag that just is sleek, nice, and it doesn't look like a camera bag, this is the bag to go for. This bag is super cool because it has a camera cube compartment over here, but it also has a compartment here. It also has a laptop sleeve, an iPad sleeve, and little compartment, not so little actually, for other stuff, miscellaneous stuff. And what's cool about this bag is that it has a rollable top. So, if you have a lot of stuff, you can stuff your stuff up here and it can close like that or you can close like this, or just how, depends on how much stuff you have. So I've used this multiple times and it's totally still my favorite bag to use. It's my go-to backpack when I'm traveling. This is my main bag, carries my laptop, my cameras. You can carry a 70 to 200 with a camera and a couple of other lenses. And aside from that, one of the things I really love about this bag is that I know that it's super safe because to be able to access the stuff you'd have to take it off because the back is like a, it's one of those put it on the flat like that to be able to access it. So yeah, I know all my stuff is safe. To access the main stuff, like steal my laptop and stuff like that, you probably couldn't because 
If it's on my back, then it's safe. And that's usually one of the things that I always do is that I never put down my bags, especially when I'm in transit because, I don't know, I just, I just, it just doesn't feel right. Like if I put it down, one minute it's there and then the next it could be gone and that is like a lot of money lost. And I do not want to go through that ever. Like no one should go through that. Like if you're going to steal people's bags, why? Why would you do that? So yeah, super safe bag, still the bag I use. So yeah, very, very, very useful. I can't stress it enough. This is really my favorite bag. If someone asks me what bag to buy, it's always this one that I recommend. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be changing anytime soon. I really love this bag. It looks sleek, it looks nice. It comes in all black, so it's, you know, it's not attention grabbing. One thing that I could improve upon this bag is that the insides were a brighter color because all our camera gear is black. I've said this in another video. All our camera gear is black, all the equipment is black, and if it's black on the inside, it's super difficult to see or just to be able to distinguish what's gear from what's bag. And if it's easier, like with the Pelican, like a bright yellow on black gear, you could easily tell what your gear is and it'll be so much easier to grab for stuff or to look for stuff. So yeah. Still, super useful. All right, the next thing I cannot bring here because it's a giant refrigerator of lenses. It's not really a refrigerator. It's a dry box or a dry cabinet because it's kind of big and it holds all my stuff. Here's some B-roll of it while I talk about it. So yeah, I recently just got this and bun dry cabinet and it's very, very useful. I'm gonna say it from the start. That is my rating for it. That is my gap score, very useful. If you live in somewhere humid, somewhere hot, like the Philippines, which is humid and hot, then keeping your lenses and your gear fungus-free or free from whatever humidity can do is super important. Now, I've invested a lot in lenses. And with investing a lot in lenses, a tiny little investment compared to all of the lenses I've bought of buying a dry cabinet, it's inconsequential, basically, because it makes sure that my lenses don't get any fungus. And you know, when lenses get fungus, it's super hard to clean. You have to pay a lot for that. And I just don't wanna go through that. So now I'm sure that my lenses are pretty safe from getting fungus or some gross stuff in it, especially in this humid climate. So yeah, apart from that, it also serves as a really nice place to put your lenses so they're not just on a table or in a bag. They're arranged nicely inside a cabinet and it also has a lock. So when you're leaving your house for extended periods of time, you can lock it and your lens will be safe inside. It also has a light so you can turn it on to see the lenses because it's black inside again with a black on black. And now because we are here, let's go through some gear. I'll do this really quickly because I, there's a lot of lenses and a lot of gear and I don't want this video to be an hour long. So, let's go. All right, so this is most of my camera gear in terms of lenses and cameras. So, let's go from left to right. So this beast of a lens over here is the Nikkor 70-200 2.8 version 2 VR. Long name for a long lens. Whenever I refer to this lens, I always refer to it in superbly because it is just Super bully. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's just it's just an amazing lens. When you need a 70 to 200, it comes in clutch. Like, if you're far away from something and you want to get close, bang, 200 millimeters, easy. Shooting concerts, 70 to 200 is so useful. I used to shoot all my concerts with this tiny lens, 50 mil, and it got the job done. But that was only because I usually had passes and I could be right in front. But if you're shooting with a lot of people and like there, it's a big event and you can't usually be in front, then this thing comes in handy. Would super recommend getting a 70 to 200. Fun fact, I did not buy mine brand new because brand new, it costs around $2,000, $3,000 and I am not ready to shell out that much cash for a lens. I found this super cool deal Actually, I didn't find it. It was my friend Ken that found it. Shout out to Ken. I got this for, guess how much? 50,000 pesos. $1,000 for this. In stores, I checked, it costs like 150,000 pesos or almost $3,000. And I got it for 50K. Super steel. And I mean, look at it. It's pristine. It is the previous owner. I talked to him. He's also a photographer and he takes care of his gear really well. 
And that's what I aim to do. So whoever gets this after I sell it, I'm not gonna sell it anytime soon, but when I do sell it, I want them to think like, wow, this guy really takes care of his gear, which is not what you'd think when you look at this camera. So I'm sorry. Okay, moving on. Here is the Nikon Z7. This is not my Z7. This is actually a loner Z7. What's cool about being able to work with Nikon is they usually lend me stuff and so if I say I have a project and I need an extra camera, then bang, they'll lend me a Z7, a Z6, a Z50, or whatever I need. So thank you, Nikon. Very much appreciated. So yeah, this was a loner. I was actually working with them a couple of weeks before <laughs> coronavirus hit, and then it hit, and now it's stuck with me. So yeah, I'm a temporary owner of a Z7. I've been using it a lot for product shots of like random stuff. Yeah, but basically, if I want like really nice detailed shots, Z7. But for everything else, C6. Basically, if you need all the megapixels, this is 45.7 megapixels, if I'm not mistaken, then it's very useful. When I shot the super moon or pink moon or whatever moon, there's always a different kind of moon all the time. Like they say it happens like once every blah, blah, blah years, but it like there's a different one that happens every month. Anyway, besides the point, when I shot the moon, I shot it at 200 mil and then I zoomed in all the way and I still got really, really nice details because of the huge megapixel count. So super useful when you need the megapixels. If not, Z6. I would, I have a hard time rating this as a semi-useful because it's, it's, it's the main camera for a lot of people. So for a lot of people, it'd be super useful. But because I have a Z6, it's semi-useful. I still go to my Z6 for most of the stuff that I shoot and I just use this as a backup camera. All right, this guy over here, 50 millimeter 1.8. This was my first Nikon lens ever. This is what I paired with this guy, the Nikon D750, for the longest time, and it was these two, match made in heaven. The perfect combo for any portrait photographer. I mean, portrait, for me, I guess, I don't know. Like, yeah, I found it really nice, and I have a lot of friends who are portrait photographers that love shooting on 50. So yeah, 50 mil, great focal length, and yeah, super, super useful. I used it a lot, and I'm very happy. All right, moving on. This is, actually just did a video on this. This is the Z 35 millimeter 1.8 S. This is the 35 prime of the Z line. I bought it from Nikon about almost a year ago. I actually did a video about this. So I'll just link that video down in the description. But yeah, super useful. I, I'm not gonna waste time of this video because I made a whole video about this lens and I love it. Moving on, this over here is the kit lens of the Z-Line. And usually when you say kit lens, like you think of oh, a cheap like 18 to 55 or 18 to 50 or 16 to 50, and it's really not that good. But this, this guy, amazing. This was my main vlogging lens when I still did daily vlogging before. And it's still my main wide to telephoto lens because it goes at 24 to 70, which is in its name, of course. But at 24, it's pretty wide. It can do most things that you would need. And at 70, it's decently telephoto. But I think what makes this lens so nice and useful is its size. This is an F4 lens. Now, F4 isn't that fast, but it's fast enough. But what I like about it is that it's consistent at F4. So it's good that it's consistent so you don't have to change your aperture, so you don't have a difference in light when you go through the zoom range. The bigger brother, bigger and more expensive brother and heavier brother, which I've tried of this lens is the 24 to 70 2.8, which is usually the lens that most pros go with in their kit. But I've seen a lot of pros go with this instead just because it's so light and it's so sharp actually. Like all the Z line lenses are crazy sharp. This versus the 24 to 70 2.8 Z lens, the difference isn't that big that it would justify the giant size. But if you really need the 2.8 or if you just want the 2.8, then go ahead. But this kit lens, super useful. All right, moving on. This is the, I have to read it because I don't use this a lot. The 24 to 85 F 3.5 to 4.5 G for the F mount lenses. So Nikon F mount. So this is a lens that I bought when I didn't have any wide lenses. I only had this guy and this guy. So I needed a wide lens. So this is what I got. I think I got it for like 18,000 pesos, which is like a little under 500, $400. And yeah, it's, it's, this is, I think this is basically like below the kit lens of 
the Nikon D750. So yeah, again, going back to the constant aperture thing, this doesn't have a constant aperture, so it's pretty tiresome when you want it to go from wide to the most telephoto. It would change from 3.5 to 4.5, so that was annoying. It's not really built that well. I mean, it's a pretty cheap lens, but you get the range. So I guess you get what you pay for with this lens. I mean, it's decent. At the widest, I remember there's a lot of distortion and at the telephoto, it's not that nice of a telephoto. At 85, this looked a little worse than this at 70. I mean, in terms of bokeh. So I actually would not recommend this lens. I guess this is it. This is our first do not buy. and. It breaks my heart to say this because I spent money on this, but don't buy this lens. With lenses, what I usually like to do is just go with the best lenses that I can afford. Splurging on lenses is very justifiable because you use them down the line and you'll be using them forever. But if you cheap out on lenses, then you will be using them for that one purpose that you thought you needed during that time and never use them again. And that is why this guy stays at the very back of the dry cabinet and never gets brought out. Sorry, I mean, I hate to say it, it's just not a very good lens. And then here is the D750. This is my backup camera now. It used to be my main camera, but I moved on to the Z6. D750 is amazing. I love the colors. I love the dynamic range. I love the shadow recovery. Everything about this camera is amazing, except for its autofocus. So. That's why they made the D780. And they put the autofocus of the Z6 into the body of the D750 and made a D780. And now that um, camera is amazing. And yeah, if you like DSLRs, that is the camera to go for. But if you like mirrorless, Z6. I will never, ever, ever talk shit about this camera because this camera is amazing, even by today's standards, if you like DSLRs, of course. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. If you could get this for cheap, like, below a thousand dollars and you wanted a B cam or just a second camera, go for it. Cause I mean, 24 megapixels, the autofocus pretty good, not good in live view at all, garbage in live view. Yeah, I mean, it's a DSLR from 2014, six years ago, and it's still pretty good. And lastly, you can't see it because it's filming me right now. That's the Nikon Z6 paired with a 14 to 30 F4 S lens. This combo, Amazing. I've already talked a lot about the Z6 and that's a for sure super useful favorite camera of all time right now. Other brands have released new stuff and I'm, I'm still so in love with my Z6. It gets the job done. It gets everything that I want done in such a nice package, such a light, nice package. I haven't had any problems with the Z6 and I've enjoyed every moment shooting with it. So yeah, so let's talk about the 14 to 30. Now this lens, I've used it over the last year quite a lot. It's not mine, it's a loaner from Nikon also, but I borrow it a lot because I do vlogs like this. Now, right now we are shooting at 16 millimeters, but let's go to 14 and look at the wideness. I can go stretch my hands like this and my hands are not out of frame. <laughs> that's super cool, let's put it back. Uh, uh, there, 16, that's nice. But yeah, it's super wide, super nice. I'm planning to actually get one myself because, I mean, look at this. This is a really nice angle. Kind of feels like unbox therapy. But yeah, I love this lens. It is great, super useful for vlogging and just, you know, travel photography. So if you're in the market for a really wide lens for the Z6 or Z7 or Z50, Go for it, amazing lens. Really sharp as well. I never really had a problem that it was only at f4. And I mean, like, look at this. You can zoom in like this. You can zoom out like that. You can see my microphone here. But I choose 16 millimeters. That looks pretty decent. And yeah, that's about it for my camera gear gear, as in the cameras and the lenses. I'm pretty happy that only one of them I regret buying. I never really have impulsive purchases. I'd like to pride myself in that. Like I never like go like, oh, I'm gonna buy a lens today. I really think about it and think about how it's gonna help me. And I hope that these videos, by me making this video, helps you decide on what lenses or what gear to buy, if you should buy it at all. Cameras, gear, video stuff, expensive stuff and they're huge investments. So yeah, make sure that it'll be useful and you can maybe in the future make a video patting yourself on the back 
for the good decisions that you made when buying your gear. But we're not yet done. That is just the start of it. There is a lot of accessories. And this is where I will suffer because I will have to give a lot of do not buys to accessories because they're small, they're sometimes cheap, sometimes expensive, but they're cheaper than this stuff. So it's a lot easier to just be like, yeah, okay, I'll buy it, I need it. But then you just use it once. So yeah, now I have a table full of my accessories. I just have a table right in front of my TV that I leave for all my accessories. That's where I put my stuff. That's where I charge my stuff. And yeah, let's just go through it. All right, the next thing is a pretty minor thing, but it can help in a major way. And that is a five in one, 43 inch reflector. I've had this for almost, why do I slap things? I've had this for almost six years and this one is pretty broken. I think I broke the main thing. Now all that's left is the inside. Ugh. Yeah, this is super cool. I'm just gonna put it here. Yeah, this is super cool. Nope. Yeah, this is super cool. It's huge and it's nice to just bounce things off. Like if you wanted to put it here and just bounce this main light here, bang. I lost the main, the five in one-ness of it. So it's just one now. But when it was five in one, super useful. I think I bought this for around, I'd like to say a thousand bucks, like a thousand pesos, which is like, what, $20? So yeah, I mean, it was pretty cheap. That's why it broke, but it lasted me quite a while and I used it on a lot of shoots. So yeah, I'd say it's pretty useful. The next thing isn't even something that I bought outright. It just came with one of my stands and I just recently realized how to use this on sets. And I was happy to find out that I actually already had it. I didn't know. And that is a sandbag. Super cool. So basically, this is just a, they call it a sandbag because they put sand in it. And that's why it has two zippers here. So you can zip in the sand there. And then you have another zipper so that it doesn't spill out. And it has two on the side. And this basically just goes as any counterweight on anything, honestly. So you could put it at the end of a stand or at the bottom on the feet of a C stand, like, like that. The way I use it is I don't have any sand or I don't know where, where would I get sand? So what I do is I put some weights in it from my dumbbells because you can take off the weights of my dumbbells and I just put them inside, one on each side. Then I have a carabiner, carabiner, never really learned how to say that word. And you just hang it there or again, the, on the legs, pretend this is a leg of a C stand, just like that. Super useful, I keep these two together because they're foldable and it's just nice to know where things are. I mean, like your room is always just messy, but you know exactly where things are. And if someone asks you for something, you know exactly where to look for it, even in all of the chaos. So yeah, that's where you find it. All right, moving on to our next product. Now this is the Road Link Video Makers Kit. I think that's what they call it, Road Link, Road Link Filmmakers Kit. It's basically a pair of transmitter and receiver. It's a wireless love system. So it comes with this. This is the thing that goes on top of your camera. And this, this goes in your pocket. And it also comes with a mic, nice mic, a lapel mic that goes over here in, under your clothes. And yeah, I got this, I think in 2018 when I wanted to up my video quality a little bit because when I was filming myself shooting on the streets or in different places, I was just using a shotgun microphone. And by doing this, I was able to get the mic a lot closer to myself. And I even used this in the studio here at home to film videos sitting down before I got this guy, which is another microphone that I'm gonna talk about. Pretty cool set. I still use this for interviews and stuff like that especially when I need to be moving around and I can't just have a microphone follow the person. So yeah, it's super useful. I think right now Rode has made a smaller kit that works exactly like this. I think it's like the Rode Link, or I, I don't know what it's called, but it's like tiny, it's like this small and you don't have to have clunky stuff anymore and it already has a built-in mic so you don't have to wire a mic if you don't want to. And that is so much cooler and I think it's also a lot cheaper than this. I got this for here in the Philippines, 24,000 pesos, which is a little bit under $500. Stuff here expensive. But yeah, very much worth it. Still works. It takes two AA batteries each. 
I would recommend you guys adding a lav mic or a wireless mic into your arsenal because it can come in very useful and it gives you an easy and pretty affordable now way of getting a really good audio. Especially if your subject can move far away and isn't in a, you know, set setting. Set setting, how you say it? But yeah, basically if your subject's gonna move around, then this is super useful. So I would rate it a very useful. Moving on to other accessories. These over here are batteries and batteries are super useful. These are the Sony NP-F970 batteries. They're a type of battery that goes on a lot of different accessories, different products. These are like the universal batteries that Sony makes. They come in different sizes. This one, this tiny one, tiny, tiny, tiny. Battery is for my Atomos. This goes on the Atomos Ninja Star. And this one could also go on the Atomos Ninja Star. What's cool about this is that they have the same mount, but they come in different sizes. So depending on how much battery you need, um, they can range from this tiny to, I think a little bit bigger than this one. I think this is the second biggest one. So I go with the second biggest one for most of my stuff. This is actually the kind of battery that's powering my Lilliput 4K monitor that just died. So I'm gonna switch this one out for that one. All right, fresh battery. It's green now. So I just gotta say that these batteries are super useful. If you have a lot of accessories, you can get batteries from different brands and they will work on the same mount as long as it has this kind of mount. I've bought this kind of no brand one. I've bought this smaller, not so small, but it's Yang Nuo. It's pretty good. I've also bought the Sony one. It's also pretty good. I would recommend getting a, a nice Sony one and I would recommend getting at least three or four because while I'm charging them, I'm using one and then I'm charging the other. So yeah, you're able to swap it out and just continue using your stuff. So yeah, this is like the universal, this is the cheaper universal battery that's not a V-mount or a gold mount battery. So yeah, for smaller accessories, this is the type of battery that you want. Super useful. I would recommend you get at least three to four of these. So yeah, it's just useful on set and just having a couple of these in different sizes if you want helps a lot. All right, next. Ooh, this is a fun one. This is the DJI. Mavic Air. This is the first version. Right now, there is a Mavic Air 2, and I'm kind of sad that they went in the direction of all the DJI Mavic stuff looking the same. Well, it kind of makes sense because it's all under the brand name of Mavic. But just look at this guy. This guy is so tiny, so sexy, and it fits in this nice little pouch here. You can just plop him up, and it's a nice little drone. I'm just I'm kind of sad that they let go of this form factor because I really do enjoy this form factor and it just folds up really, really nicely. But that's not gonna stop me from buying a new drone, is it? But yeah, this drone, the Mavic Air, I love this drone. It is amazing for its size, its weight, its pocketability, and its price as well. I used to use the Spark, the DJI Spark, but that was just my friends and he was just lending it to me to learn how to fly drones. And when I was able to fly drones already more proficiently, I upgraded to this guy and it's a little bit bigger, but not so much. Actually, the footprint when folded up is actually smaller than the Spark. So that's what's super cool. And I just love the body design of this drone. It's it's like super nice and sexy and with the red, just, just I just love it. And so yeah, this is the drone that I bring around What's nice about it is it doesn't call attention to itself. So when it's in your backpack and you're passing through security checkpoints at the airport, it's not like a giant thing that needs its own case or it needs its own like bag. It's just like a tiny little drone that you can fold up and it almost looks like a toy. And I think that is one of the most useful and best factors about this thing. Like you can just fold it up, put it like that, and you wouldn't even be able to tell that a whole drone, a 4K drone, was in this little pouch. It's also nice, the controller also fits nicely small like that. And then, so that's basically it, that's all you need. And then your phone and then a cable. And that's it, you can fly a drone, you have your whole 4K drone aerial photography videography set in this tiny package. 
So yeah, I would totally recommend this. I'm super happy with this purchase. I've had it for almost two years, I think, and just a great drone because of the sheer value for money and just how small this is and how easy to use this drone is, I would give it a very useful. I love this drone. When I get to fly it, it's super fun. When I don't get to fly it, it looks super cool. Moving on to more accessories. This is called a friction arm. This is by the brand Newer. And um, yeah, it's just a friction arm. It's actually what I'm also using to mount my monitor right beside my camera. But yeah, the idea of this is you can twist this and it's basically an arm that extends. You can screw stuff on it. So depending on what you want, you can put a monitor, you can put a microphone, you can put whatever. And this basically just clamps nicely like this, nice and tight. And then all you gotta do is have whatever here, twist this and you can twist it in different ways. And yeah, basically, it just gives you a helping hand, literally, or a helping arm to hold stuff like a mic. You could use this as a mic, as a boom like this, or you could use, uh, you can have a monitor or your recorder or whatever. So yeah, super useful just to have in your arsenal. I bought these off Amazon and it was pretty cheap. I think it was like, I'm not sure actually the price, but I remember it's pretty cheap. This, this is just like a random brand. And it does the job pretty well. So I would recommend you getting a couple of these. Comes in really clutch, especially when you need to mount something and you don't have any arm or any thing to put it on. Helps a lot. And you can angle it really nicely. I have one permanently on my Lilliput A7S monitor so that I can just angle the monitor in whatever way I want, up, down, left, right, behind, front, whatever. It's just super easy to use it to angle stuff and to mount stuff, and yeah. Up next, these things. <laughs> yeah, these things, these are rocket blowers. They're not exactly rockets because they don't have the feet, but they're blowers that blow air. What more do you want? It's, it's good for cleaning stuff. Like, if you don't want to touch the thing, it's, it's nice. Not particularly useful. I mean, ideally, in a perfect world when I'm changing lenses in the field or out there or even in here, I would be using this in between switching out the lens because, you know, just take off the dust from your sensor, from your lenses, but I don't. It's not a perfect world. There's fucking coronavirus. We're all at home for months. And yeah, I don't use this when I'm on the field switching lenses or yeah. I always bring it with me, but I don't use it because I'm too busy just doing what I'm doing like with the shoot that I'm not gonna go grab, do an extra thing to grab this and then go I mean like if there's dust on the sensor, yes, it's useful. But aside from that, I just use this when I need to clean and I rarely need to clean. And now I'm wondering why I have two. So yeah, semi-useful. Definitely good to have one. I don't know, keep it at home, keep it in your bag. I don't really use it, which is a bad habit of mine. You know, never mind. I take it back. Get one of these, use it on the shoot. Don't be like me. <laughs> Next is this pen thing. This is a cleaning pen for your lenses. Uh, I don't know, I bought this because I thought I needed it and I, I needed it like once to clean lenses. And then I needed it a second time, like, I don't know, five months later when I wanted to clean lenses. I don't clean my lenses a lot because I'd like to think that I keep them pretty clean and I don't go on shoots that, that get them dirty. But this pen here, I thought it'd be useful to be like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> you know that TikTok thing? But yeah. Um, yeah, it's good for cleaning lenses. You can scrub. You can use this little thing to just get dust off. It's cool. Wouldn't really buy one. Um, yeah, just get a microfiber cloth instead of this. Not particularly useful. Although, you know, it's a two-in-one, so it's trying to really be useful, but it's not really useful, so I don't use it. Yeah. Don't buy one. Next accessory is this. This is not a fur ball. This is not a little cat. It is a microphone underneath. Yeah. This is the Rode 
video micro and micro is correct because it's tiny it doesn't need a battery it kind of looks like a mouse with its dangling thing but yeah this was my old go-to microphone before i switched to this one the deity v mic d3 pro Ugh, pro in the name wow but yeah this one is really cheap this mic was like four thousand pesos four five thousand pesos doesn't need a battery it's plug and play there's no controls at all. There's no gain, whatever. So you just basically just plug it in your camera and change settings in your camera. But I was using this until like last year, until this thing died on me. I'm not sure whether it's the connection. I tried different connections. So I think it's the mic, but yeah. I used this for a solid three years before it died on me. So I don't know what more to say. It, it's, it's great value for money. It was less than a hundred dollars. So yeah, and you already get a pretty decent mic. I know a lot of people that still use this mic because of the sheer simplicity. No need to charge, no need to worry about gain or stuff like that. You just plug and play and you know that it's working. And yeah, makes life really simple. Should you get one? If you don't have a better mic, yes. If you just want one for simplicity, I think there are other mics out there. I think the, the mic market has changed this was king before, in the time of Rode Video Mic Pros and this guy. These were the only two mics available. But now, there's a lot of different mics with Deity giving such good value for money, so I'd recommend this only if you really wanted to buy a plug-and-play mic and you didn't want to worry about anything else. But aside from that, there are other mics. So for that reason, I will give this a semi-useful. I mean, it was very useful before, but now I really wouldn't recommend it. Next are these. Now these are not glasses. They are not weird eye thingies. They are actually suction cups. Yeah, you heard me right. Suction cups for your lenses, different sizes. So basically, this is what I use to reduce reflections when shooting through a window. Now I bought these two guys. These are the two sizes I have. I think it's 72 and 67 millimeters. Um, I bought this for my helicopter shoot. I'll link it somewhere. But yeah, I thought they, these would be useful. And they were for that shoot because I knew I couldn't take off the doors of the helicopter. And, but I wanted good photos. I didn't want glare. So how you use this is, this is the window. And you put your camera right here so it blocks the glare coming in from the side of the lens. So yeah, it, it reduces the glare basically and the reflections. And it was, wow, that made a cool sound. And it was useful at the time, but now I don't use this at all. Like at all, even if I'm shooting through a window. I, I mean, I use a jacket. I don't bring this. It takes up space. I mean, it folds up, but it takes up space. And you have to screw it onto your lens and then you have to take it off after. It looks kind of funny. It's not nice to keep on your lens. Would not recommend. I used this once and never used it again. So yeah, don't be like me. Don't waste your money on this. Just get a jacket if you're just gonna do something that requires something like this. A dark jacket will do the job instead of these things. Don't buy it. Next thing is a lens, and if you're wondering why I didn't include this little tiny pancake lens thingy moving thing in my other lenses collection thing, that's because this guy, I don't really even consider it as a lens to use. I know I made a video about it before, but I was just excited about its cool quirkiness. But aside from that, it's not very useful. This is the Lens Baby Sol 45 3.5. It's basically one of those, le it's hard to explain, honestly. So I'll just link my video. I was pretty enthusiastic about it because it was fun and they sent this to me. And, but I have grown as a YouTuber and I've learned that not everything that's sent to you is really that useful, honestly. <laughs> In the long run, at least. I mean, it's a fun lens. And isn't that what photography is about? Just having fun. But I really wouldn't go out of my way to buy this in hindsight. I used it for that video and for a couple shoots after. But aside from that, I never used this again. That's why <laughs> there's so much freaking dust on this guy. And basically it's just a nice um, paperweight. It was a cool lens at the time, but 
I don't use it a lot, so wouldn't recommend it. So yeah, now you can see the trend, Ugh, so dusty, that with accessories, you think you need them and then you don't really need them. So yeah, we're getting into a lot of don't buys. It's really the small things that get you. It's not the big things, because most of the big expensive things, no regrets. The small things, yeah. Moving on to a classic, the Joby Gorillapod. This model right here, this specific one that I'm pointing to that I'm holding is the Joby Gorillapod 3K Pro. And what's different about this is it has a new smaller design than the normal 3K. It's made of metal. The You can actually feel how cold the legs are. And this was my vlogging tripod until I stopped vlogging. And still my main tripod. When I do vlogs, when I do travel vlogs, this is super useful, super handy. And what's nice is it's still really strong. And it, yeah, it, it's because it's the pro version, it's made of metal. It's not the plasticky one. Because even if you get the actual original Gorillapod branded ones, they eventually, after a few months, get loose and they give way. And that's actually why I almost freaking broke a lens, the 24 to 70, one time. I'll put the picture right here. Get a good Gorillapod if you're gonna vlog. Get this one, the 3K. I'll link it down in the description. Yeah, super useful. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys just some of what I call my Gorillapod graveyard. So yeah, I have this little cubby with all the dead gorilla pods I have. These guys were useful before, but yeah, they they were they didn't really last that long. So yeah, I have a lot of these. These are just like I think I have like four more that are just in different places. This is just the ones I keep here. But yeah, gorilla pod very useful. Next thing is well, I almost dropped that the. Best view? Best view? I don't know. It looks like a B to me. What does it look like to you guys? This is a B, right? But lots of on the website it's desk view. But it looks like a B because the I here, right? I don't know. But this is kind of dusty. <laughs> this is a ciao, teleprompter. So this thing goes right there it's a little wide this is not meant for something this wide but normally i put this on my 35 and then i put my phone right under here it opens up like that and you put your phone and then it projects it onto this glass over here and this glass if you see through it you actually cannot see the text and that is super useful when i have stuff that i want to say usually for reviews i use this right now i'm not using it duh because I'm just off the top, like, you know, like the rappers. But um, yeah, this one, I use this for reviews when I write out scripts because I wanna be as concise as possible. I wanna be able to deliver my message in the shortest but most efficient way. So usually that requires me to type up my scripts and then I just read it from here. So super useful. I bought this for around five, 4,000, 5,000 pesos. So that's around a little less than a hundred dollars. This one is just like a cheap plasticky version, but it's it's not that well built. It's it's just plastic, and there are a lot of more expensive, bigger ones for like iPads and stuff like that. But I didn't want to really spend honestly on just yeah. I, I just wanted to try it out, and yeah, I do really enjoy teleprompters. So maybe in the future I'll invest in a bigger one. But right now this one gets the job done. Uh, pretty cool, very useful, would recommend. Try to get a cheap one first and then upgrade to a more expensive one if teleprompters are your thing. If they're not, then you just wasted a lot of money. So go with the cheap one first. Up next is, dun, 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 dun. now these look like orange juicers or lemon juicers, but no, it is not. These are flash domes or not really a dome, but like, Flash accessories. Now these go on top of your flashes. It has a nice little Velcro strap here. And then you just put it on top of your flash. And then the flash fires, diffuses it nicely so you don't get that really, really ugly, like harsh lighting flash when you're doing some events. 
that's just one of the things I really hate. Like when, when the flash fires directly like onto the subject and they look like deer in headlights and it just, it's not a good look. So by diffusing the light, you're able to point this in any which way you want and it just spills nicely in a soft way. So it looks natural and you have different um, domes, the more, more con, concave actually. Uh, usually I use this white one just so it's clean, but if you want it to be a little bit more orange, you can use the orange one, or if you want it to just go throughout and then just strengthen, you can use this silver one. Uh, another pro tip is on your flash, you can see over here, what I did was I put a little baller band, you know, like back in like 2011 when we used to wear those rubber baller bands. I flipped it, put it here, so this thing has something to grip. And see how strong it is. Look how strong that is. I can legit put a camera here and hold it like this. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. Which is just confidence inspiring, which is also not confidence inspiring because why would you do that with a camera? But if you just needed to, whoops, then you could do that. So put your old ugly 2011 baller bands to good use and put them on your flash if you have this thing. So yeah, um, in conclusion, would I recommend that you get one if and only if you do events or you have a flash and you want it to be soft and nice. But honestly, there are a lot of other things that you can use. For example, if you're not doing events, that will diffuse your flash better. Now moving on to the flash. This is the Yongnuo YN564. Yongnuo is like the catch-all, like it's, it's, it's not a catch-all, it's, it's, like it's, it's like a China brand of photography things. So they have lenses, they have flashes, they have lights. They're not of uh, the best quality, but it gets the job done sometimes if you're starting out. Okay, so th basically this is a knockoff of Canon flashes. Like these buttons over here, they don't do anything. You can just like, and this thing, this thing doesn't even do anything. Yeah, but they just wanted to copy the design. But I mean, a flash is a flash. It gets the job done. I feel like I say that a lot. I seldom do events anymore, so I don't really need flashes. And now with faster lenses, I prefer to use natural light or whatever light's available rather than using a flash. Unless it's like a party or like a, a you know, the dance part of the event where you definitely need a flash, then yes. But if not, not very useful. I don't really enjoy using a flash. Up next is this thing. <laughs> oh, I remember this guys. Okay, let's. Let's wear it just for fun. All right. Oh, look at that. The cause figure also has a chest strap. Anyway, so this is not a man bra, <laughs> although it makes me. <laughs> but yeah, this is a GoPro chest strap. Your GoPro goes inside here and you're able to have a chest point of view. I use this in my street photography POV video and it was very useful. I do plan to make another one of those videos because you guys pretty much enjoyed that. And I also enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun, it was pretty chill. You just basically just go out and shoot and just let your creativity run wild. And so I'm gonna do another video of those once we get to go outside. Although I think it'd be pretty cool to do one, not right now, but when we're allowed to go outside, just see the new normal, you know what I mean? Like how things have changed, how people are different now, now that you know we're more aware of social distancing and just having your own personal space, washing your hands and all that stuff like that. That'd be super cool. But yeah, um, back to the topic at hand. Would I recommend this? Semi-useful. I don't regret buying it. I'm happy I have it. I'm still gonna use this, but I don't use it a lot or I only use it in, on those occasions so it doesn't get the very useful. Next is a set of Zome optical filters. These are known as star filters. And basically what they do is, um, take a look at the image here. Uh, basically it turns um, lights into star looking things. I'll put a photo over and that's pretty much what it looks like. Pretty cool. I got all the same size for my 35 millimeter. These come in star six, uh, star four, and star 
8. Yeah, star 8. So the one I like to use the most is the star 4. I think it looks the nicest. Yeah, uh, I enjoy these. If you're into that star look, it's fun once in a while, but not all the time. It gets a little tiring. Would I recommend you buy this? Only if you're into that type of photography, if you just want to add a little sparkle, literally, to your photography. But if you're not into that kind of photography, don't buy it. So I would rate this a semi-useful. I've used it for a couple of shoots and it really gives a nice effect, but I wouldn't really recommend it to everybody. Accessories galore. Here is what I haven't used in literally, literally five years. This is a macro extension tube, but it's only manual. It literally just makes the distance of your lens and the sensor further depending on how much you want so you can stack it. Uh, I used to use this before. I used it on one shoot because I wanted to do some macro eye photography. And then I realized that you needed a proper light, which I didn't have. And then I never used it again. And then I switched camera systems. And now I just have a paperweight. So yeah, um, fun to play with, I guess, once. So I really wouldn't recommend you buy this unless you're really into macro photography, in which case I would suggest you get a proper macro lens like the Nikon 105 f 2.8 or the 60 f 4 I think or 2, I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, I don't recommend you get macro extension tubes because they're not very useful. Moving on to more useful accessories. This over here is the Atomos Ninja Star. And it's called Ninja Star because it's so tiny. This is the smallest recorder Atomos has or had because this is actually phased out already. And basically what it's useful for is recording your viewfinder or your screen. And it just sits nicely on top of your camera and it's able to record exactly what you see so you can see all your settings before and after you take the photo. So that's actually what I use for my POV video of shooting on the streets. And yeah, comes in really nicely in a small package that it's not too attention grabbing because I think right now the smallest that you'd have is the five inch, call it Ninja 5, I think. And five inches is like, a little bit bigger, a lot, actually, a lot bigger than this. This doesn't even have a screen, so it literally just has a red dot thing that tells you that it's recording, and then super minimal, and it just has dots for, like, how much time you have left. Yeah, I got this for really cheap. I think this used to be, like, I don't know, I could be wrong, $300, $400, but I got this for 10,000 pesos, actually even less, I think, like, 9,000 pesos, because it was on a sale at MQ Lightings. I'll link their stuff down below. They're a super cool store. I love their store. They have pro level, broadcast level gear. They have Kino Flow lights. That's actually where I bought my aperture lights. And yeah, great store. They have great stuff. They also have lots of tripods from Manfrotto. Bottom line, would I recommend you buy an Atomos Ninja Star? No, honestly. It's useful for me because I wanna show you guys what's on my viewfinder when I do videos, when I do tutorials, when I do, yeah, whatever. Because I, this is what I do. I show you guys what I do. But if you're like a creative that's not really in the same field that I'm doing, then this, I would be hard pressed to recommend you get this because what are you gonna do with this? I mean, I guess it's fun to show your viewfinder, but aside from that, not the most useful. So I'd give it a semi-useful for everyone else. Very useful for me. But since I haven't gotten to go on a shoot in a while, not that useful. But when I do go on shoots, I like to put this on and just record everything so I can show you guys if I want to make a video of it. So I'm gonna give it a very useful. Now let's move on to this side of the room. There's not much anymore, don't worry, we're almost done. And the next stuff that I'm gonna be talking about will most likely fall under very useful because I'm currently using them right now. So let's start with this. These are a pair of Yongnuo YN600 Air. Okay, what I said about Yongnuo a while ago, they're kind of like a cheap China brand of lights. Well, these were my starter lights. So yeah, these are LED panels. Um, it's the YN600 Air because it's pretty thin compared to their other panels. 
They don't have the barn doors or anything like that. It has a sheet of diffusion already. And yeah, it's pretty nice. I got this for less than 7,000 pesos, I think. Yeah, it takes, again, the Sony type of batteries here at the back and has two different dial controls. You can turn it on and off from zero to 100. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's pretty light. It doesn't come with a case. I wish it had come with a case, but that, that would've been nice. But what I do, what I used to do, is I'd fire this at an umbrella and that would be my nice big soft light. But now I have this baby that I'm gonna talk about in a bit. So these guys are just my hair lights or like any fill lights that I just wanna fill in the background. Right now I didn't really opt for that because I just wanted this to, I don't know. This is, do you guys like this look? I like this look, it's pretty cool. It's just one light actually. So this is, yeah, I'll just talk about it. And for the Yongnuo YN600 Air, I would say if you have no lights, they're very useful. But if you already have other lights, they're semi-useful. So, depends on who you are. They're not the most CRI color accurate lights. I mean, it doesn't really match this light perfectly, but it's enough to light stuff. So, yeah, I'd give it that. I wouldn't really recommend that you buy two of these, but I mean, if you were on a budget, then these two lights, pretty good. Good value for money. Because the next step up would just be an Aperture 120D, which is what I'm gonna be talking about. So, yeah, I, I changed my mind. I actually, I would recommend this if you're starting out and you need, and, and you wanna upgrade your light setup, great stuff. I'm putting it wrong. Great, great stuff. I am great stuff, but great stuff. And now we are on to the point where everything from here on out will be very useful because I'm currently using it. And let's start out with the light that I was talking about, my upgrade light. This is the Aperture 120D Mark II with a Light Dome Mark II as well. So yeah, it's a great light. I love this light. I mean, look at the quality of this light. It's just so nice. It just, I cannot say enough good stuff about it. All my favorite YouTubers use a 120D or a 300D paired with the Light Dome Mark II. Uh, super cool, it has this grid pattern that just keeps the light nicely shining here so it doesn't spill over onto this side or onto that side. So yeah, it's, it's a really nice light, good quality. I've used it for a lot of shoots. I actually used it on this shoot and a couple of other shoots. And now it's my main light. So it also comes with a nice remote, super handy. And you can just like, boop, now it's dark, boom, light. And you can dial it in. Right now I have it at 69%. Not because of the number, but because it looks nice. A little bit about the number. But yeah, great light. Maybe I'll make a full video reviewing this light because there's just a lot of things about this light that I really like. It's the Mark II, so the whole experience, the user experience of this, of using the light and setting it up and just using it is really good. If you have the money and you wanna invest in a good light that will last you probably your whole, I don't know, creative career, because I mean, I don't see myself, I see myself getting more lights, getting better lights, but I don't see myself letting go of this one because man, this is just so nice, definitely. I would buy. One of the best things I've bought in recent memory, aside from my lenses and stuff, of course. Best accessory. Let's talk about audio. The microphone that I'm currently using to record my voice, this is the Deity S Mic 2. It's a nice long mic. I use it for everything. I use it for dialogue. I use it for voiceovers. I use it for practically everything that has to do with video. It's just so nice, like listen to, listen to this quality. It's just, it's just beautiful. But yeah, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. But yeah, it's a really nice mic. I love it. I bought it for 23,000 pesos, which is a little bit under 400, $500. But it's, it's very, very worth it. It's a beautiful sounding mic for the price, especially it competes with your higher top end mics. I actually made a video about it here. Yeah, you can check out that video for my full thoughts about this mic. Pretty much all I want to say is it's a very good mic. It sounds really nice 
And uh, yeah, yeah, I love it. Would recommend you buy it. There's also a smaller version, which is the S Mic 2S, which is like basically the same thing, I think, but it's a little smaller if you don't have a lot of space. But I like this long mic because I can put it further away and it gets closer to me. So, and one of the tips that I use to make sure that the mic isn't in the shot is I use the, the pointer finger trick. So basically I put my finger on the tip of the mic and if my finger isn't in the shot, then the mic isn't in the shot. So yeah, but if I do this, boom. See, the mic's in the shot. So my finger's in the shot, the mic's in the shot. If I do this, yeah, good stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's about it. I think I'll save the rest of my desk for a desk setup video that will come maybe sooner rather than later because of this quarantine, because there's no other videos because quarantine content, I mean, yeah, fun stuff. Again, I want to remind everyone that all the stuff I've talked about in this video wasn't bought overnight. This is an accumulation of years and years of doing this. If you feel like I need to have this because Gab has this, I need to do this because Gab uses this, don't feel that way. I mean, I started out with DIY stuff and whatever I could afford back then. And eventually, as you progress with your career, as you make more videos, as you work more jobs, you're able to afford more things, little by little, one by one. It's not all in one go. As I said, everything will be linked down below if you're interested in checking it out. And I'd appreciate it if you subscribe for more content like this, quarantine content, and give this video a like. Comment down below what the most useless piece of gear you've ever bought was. I'd love to know if there's a common thing that we all waste our money on. But yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys next time.